How's it going there, YouTube? Coming at you with a very special video today. I'm gonna to be going over the different types of subwoofer enclosures that you could potentially run as you're setting up your car audio build. I'm gonna be going over some of the advantages, some of the disadvantages between the enclosures and why you may choose to pick one over the other. I've ran pretty much everything from sealed to vented to bandpass. Uh, and I tell you what, everyone has its own specific qualities and traits of why you may want to choose one over the other depending on your goals. So make sure to stay tuned. You don't wanna miss this. Let's get loud. Let's get shwindy. All right, ladies and gentlemen, before we get started, I just want to give a quick shout out to Team SPL Freaks, awesome organization, proud to be a part of it. And if you haven't checked out their sponsors, make sure to do so. Matter of fact, let me give you a quick peep. There you have it. Make sure to check them out. Now, let's get started. All right, so I am a firm believer that your subwoofer enclosure is everything in your substage because I have seen some very nice, high quality, expensive subwoofers sound like crap because they were put in a prefab enclosure or an enclosure that was built out of spec versus a cheap subwoofer that sounds phenomenal because it's in a perfectly tuned, perfectly designed enclosure. So enclosure really does make all the difference. Now, the differences between them are gonna vary depending on your goals and depending on what you want out of it. So here we go. All right, so with that being said, every subwoofer has its own parameters as far as what environment it's gonna perform its best in. Some do better in sealed, some do better in ported, uh, some need more airspace, some need less airspace. And as a good starting point, if you're just getting started and trying to figure out what kind of enclosure and how much airspace you need, what kind of tuning you're looking at, I would go off the manufacturer's recommendations because they've done the R&D, they've done the research as far as how their subwoofer is gonna perform the best. Now, needless to say, once you know what you're doing and you're getting into it a little bit more, you can tweak that and fine tune it to customize it to how you want your build set up. But as a good starting point, it's always a good rule of thumb just to go off your manufacturer's recommendations as far as tuning frequency, uh, airspace requirements, and such. All right, so literally the most basic form of a subwoofer enclosure is no enclosure at all. It's called free air. That's infinite baffle, pretty much, of where you just mount a sub, say, in your rear deck or a panel, and there's no actual enclosure. The, the, either the trunk or the car itself acts as an enclosure. Um, there are a lot of benefits to that, but there are definitely a lot of drawbacks. Um, you're just not going to get hard, heavy hitting bass out of a free air setup. Um, let's face it, you know, you are going to get some bass response, you know, some low end reproduction, but you're just not going to get that hard, heavy hitting bass. But for people that want to save the maximum amount of cargo space or not have to deal with an enclosure, um, there are specific subwoofers that are designed for free air application, okay? That would be your ticket of what you're looking for if you just want some low end, but not overly concerned with loud, thundering, pounding bass, okay? So make sure you find a subwoofer that is specific for free air, because if you take a sub that's meant for a sealed or ported enclosure and try to free air it, it's just not going to turn out well for you and you're probably going to waste your money. So make sure you find a sub that is specific for free air application. All right, so the next kind of enclosure we're gonna talk about is actually an enclosure this time. It's a sealed enclosure, and it basically is just that, a subwoofer inside of a sealed box. No ports, no vents. All right, so there are a lot of advantages and disadvantages, depending on how you look at it, to a sealed enclosure. If you're looking for tight, accurate base, think SQ, then a sealed enclosure is probably the way to go for you. Now, needless to say, yes, you can have a vented or ported enclosure for an SQ build, okay, I've seen plenty, but overall, sealed enclosures are gonna give you the tightest, cleanest, most accurate base because we all know that ported and vented enclosures can tend to be kind of boomy, okay? Now, you can circumvent that with proper tuning and filters of your amp 
and matching up the sub with your enclosure properly. But for a sealed enclosure, you really don't got to deal with that. You're going to get clean, tight, accurate base, and it's going to sound pretty good. Now, the disadvantage is it's not going to be as loud as a ported enclosure. Okay. If you give in the same sub, right, that can work in either ported or can work in sealed, because a lot of subs, you can run both. You can run ported or you can run sealed. Okay. Some are designed for one or the other, but there are a lot of subs that you can pick either or. Given the same parameters, the same power, okay, you put one in sealed and you put one in ported, you're going to get more output from the ported enclosure. Okay. That's across the board. So yeah, overall, if you're looking for more of a sound quality build, then sealed is probably the way to go. But if you want loud, boomy, um, more output from your base, then you know we'll go into ported, which we'll talk about next. Something else to add about sealed enclosures is you can typically overpower them. So let's say you have a 500 watt subwoofer and you put it in a sealed enclosure. You can probably feed it 750, maybe even 1,000, as long as you tune your gains properly, and you're not going to overexert the sub because of the added back pressure of a sealed enclosure, okay? You got to be more careful if you do that in a ported enclosure, especially if you start playing that sub close to its port tuning frequency, let alone below it. And that's the value of having a subsonic filter, so that way you don't blow your sub, okay? So there's a lot of things to consider, but... Um, in general, if you do run your subwoofer in a sealed enclosure, um, you can typically overpower it as long as the subwoofer enclosure is not too big. And that's another uh, tuning factor to consider is if you run your sealed subwoofer or your subwoofer in a sealed enclosure, the smaller the enclosure, okay, the more power you can typically give to it, okay? The bigger the sealed enclosure, you got to be careful, Okay, you got to start thinking about potentially reducing the power if your sealed enclosure starts growing too big, because what's going to happen is that subwoofer is going to start acting more and more like it's in a free air environment, the bigger the subwoofer enclosure gets, and you could potentially overexert it and blow it. So that's why a good starting point is manufacturer recommendations and uh, go from there. All right. All right. So the next kind of enclosure we're going to talk about, we touched on a little bit but we're gonna be discussing ported slash vented enclosure. The biggest benefit over sealed is that you are going to get more output. It's gonna be louder, uh, but with that comes an expense. Some people may consider a negative, some people may consider a positive. It is gonna be a little bit more sloppy or boomy, so to speak. Uh, it's not gonna be as tight and accurate as sealed. But depending on the kind of music you listen to and how well you set up your amp with your filters, you can alleviate that, mitigate all that, and make it actually sound really, really good. I've been running ported slash vented enclosures pretty much my entire life in car audio until just recently I ran a fourth order, okay? And we'll get into that next. But uh, ported enclosures definitely has uh, their benefits, and there's different types of ports. You got round ports, you got slot fence, you got all kinds of different things that are going to give you just a little bit of different output, a little bit of different sound structure, depending on your goals. But the biggest benefit is the fact that you can have a port to tune to a specific frequency that will suit your kind of music and maximize the output of your subwoofer. For me, I like low 30 hertz. Anything in the low 30s, that's a good tuning frequency for me because I listen to a lot of rap, hip hop, and digitally mastered uh, bass enhanced music. So that's the sweet spot right there for me. But um, yeah, if you're looking for high output, loud bass, then you really can't go wrong with ported. And again, there's a lot of configurations, a lot of different types of ports. You can go with your subwoofers up with the port facing back. Uh, some vehicles sound better like that, where some vehicles sound better, uh, where like a trunk, for example, where you have the subs and the port pointing backwards towards the back of the trunk. From all the builds I've done in a trunk build, that typically sounds the best. SUVs, depending on the SUV, again, depends. But I've found that sub up, port back, typically sounds pretty good for a ported enclosure and is going to give you a lot of output. So uh, definitely, again, just a quick summary, if you're looking for more output and a loud bass over your sealed enclosure, ported is the way to go.
So there you go, quick rundown between sealed versus ported. Now we're gonna get into band pass. So here we go. All right, so a band pass enclosure is just that. It's a band pass. Now, what is a band pass? Uh, when talking about filters on your amplifier or a head unit, a band pass typically passes a specific band of frequency, hence the name band pass, right? Now with a subwoofer enclosure, okay, basically the same thing. You are going to have a pass band of frequencies that are going to be optimized for whatever your bandpass enclosure is tuned for, okay? And there's different types of bandpass enclosures. You got fourth orders, you got sixth orders, you got eighth orders, you got all different types of orders. I've seen half orders. You've got series tuned, you got parallel tuned. Uh, you know, this isn't going to be an in-depth video as far as the differences between all of those. This video is just a basic rundown of why you may choose one over the other. And then you can go from there as far as the specifics about how much airspace uh, you want your sealed side to be con contrasted to how much airspace you want your ported side to be, right? That's called your ratio, either a two to one, a 2.5 to one, a three to one, or a one to one or whatever, right? The sky's the limit when it comes to your imagination with enclosures. But if you don't know what you're doing, especially with bandpass enclosures, I would definitely leave it to the experts that have spent a career building and designing enclosures based off subwoofer parameters. Um, so again, it's nothing that you can't, you know, not learn on your own, but if you want to get a feel for it, get a taste of, you know, how to, uh, you know, optimize bandpass enclosures for your subwoofers, right? Get together with somebody that knows what they're doing so that they can walk you through it, right? How to pick a specific frequency, um, how to pick a proper ratio and uh, go from there. Now, the biggest advantage to having a fourth order, sixth order, or any kind of band pass for that matter, is that you will get more output out of that specific pass band of frequency than you will out of any other enclosure. That's the design of it. That's what is meant to happen, okay? Now, you will have roll off on the front end and on the back end of your enclosure frequency pass band, but in that specific pass band, you are going to have optimized output. Now, depending on your ratio, depending on your port tuning frequency, that pass band can be very wide and broad, or it can be narrow and create a peak. And again, you know, we're not going to get into specifics of how all that works here, but just understand that it is very tunable depending on your taste of music and your overall goals. Are you looking for an SPL build and looking to compete where you just want to have that narrow pass band but a super high peak so that you can get the maximum amount of score on your SPL? Or are you looking for more daily listening where you don't have a peak but you have more of a wide pass band to kind of listen to everyday music, right? And that's kind of how I have mine set up. I'm not chasing big numbers because I like to listen to, you know, my music and have a nice pass band that I can listen to daily. So your goals are going to come into play a lot when you're determining, you know, is a band pass for you. And if you're looking for a lot of output in a specific range of frequency, then you really just can't go wrong with a fourth or sixth order. Now, the difference between fourth orders and sixth orders, they all have their own benefits as well. Um, what I do like about the fourth order, because I was kind of in a space constraint here because I wanted to keep it behind the seed pillar, is fourth orders typically don't take as much space as a sixth order. Because with a sixth order, remember, you got two ported enclosures, okay? With a fourth order, you know, one side is sealed and the other side is ported. And the seal side is actually pretty small. So, um, you know, I was able to fit what I wanted to fit back there behind the C pillar. But there is a lot of factors to take into consideration when picking what kind of enclosure you want for your setup. All right, ladies and gentlemen, well, there you have it. The differences between sealed, ported, and band pass. Everyone has its advantages. Some have some disadvantages, but overall, there is no right or wrong. What matters is what are you going to be happy with? What are your end goals of what you want out of your system? Okay, so if anybody has any questions, just comment below. 
If you haven't done so already, make sure to subscribe, like this video, turn on those notifications so you don't miss how to take your ride to the next level. Let's get loud. Oh,